would like to first start off again by welcoming everyone to the debate. Uh, I'd like to point out that we're not violating the rights of anybody. We're simply trying to protect the rights of non-smokers and smokers. I thought the same until the facts were shown to me about secondhand smoke and butt litter were shown and how harmful it was to other people. According to the Stanford University Department of S Statistics, careful scientific studies have shown that c concentrations of secondhand tobacco smoke in many outdoor areas are often as high as or higher than in some indoor areas and that the risks posed by such outdoor exposure are well beyond generally accepted norms when large numbers of people are involuntarily exposed. <coughs> Indeed, for these very reasons, the state of California, in a report summarizing much of this evidence, was preparing and now has declared outdoor tobacco smoke as a toxic air pollutant. Even for people with, with, without such respiratory conditions, breathing drifting tobacco smoke for even brief periods can be deadly. For example, the Centers for Disease, Con Disease Control has warned that dr breathing dr drifting tobacco smoke for as little as 30 minutes can raise a non-smoker's risk of suffering fatal heart attack to that of a true smoker. Secondhand tobacco is officially classified by the federal government as a known human carcinogen. Actually, it's exactly the same category as asbestos. According to the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health, the cigarded cigarette butts are a form of non-biodegradable litter carried as runoff from streets to drains and rivers and ultimately to the ocean and its beaches. Cigarette filters are the single most collected item in international beach cleanups each year. Cigarette butts discarded by smokers constitute the overwhelming majority of litter on beaches as well as in many other public places. Smoking bans have been so shown substantially to reduce the litter and therefore the cost of cleaning up beaches and other outdoor areas, as well as to improve the overall appearance and attractiveness of the area. Discarded cigarettes, which are designed to Discarded cigarettes, which are designed to continue to burn for several minutes when dropped and not puffed upon, are also a major fire hazard, threatening piers, boardwalks, and wooden structures in parks and beaches. Cigarette fil filters pose a serious litter and toxic waste disposal problem. Ultraviolet rays from the sun will eventually break the filter into smaller pieces under ideal environmental conditions, but the source material never disappears. It becomes diluted, diluted in the water or the soil, this, in this case the sand. Rather than being a protective health device, cigarette filters are primarily a marketing tool to help, safe, help sell safe cigarettes. They are perceived by the public, especially the current smokers, to reduce the health risks of smoking through technology. Filters have reduced the machine measured yield of tar and nicotine from burning cigarettes, but there is always a controversy as to whether it has correspondingly reduced the disease burden of smoking to the population. Most attention has been given to the cigarette, but butt waste problem because of filters that end up on the beaches. The annual Ocean Conservancy's International Coastal Cleanup reports that cigarette butts have been the single most collected item ever since collections began. We believe that a fee should be imposed on those who do in fact litter on the beach. Of note, this system f functions with complete support of the manufacturers themselves, with core principles calling for shared responsibility. Adding a waste fee to cigarettes is another possibility and the funds collected could be used to mitigate environmental consequences and to fund research on butt waste. Several options are available to reduce the environmental impact, including uh, butt waste, including developing biodegradable filters, increasing fines and penalties for littering, monetary deposits on the filters, meaning when you buy the cigarettes, increasing availability of butt receptacles, and expanded public education. According to the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health, while the environmental impact of a single disposed cigarette filter is minimal, there were a total of 1.35 trillion, with a T, filtered cigarettes manufactured in the United States in 2007. With 5.6 trillion filtered cigarettes consumed worldwide and 9 trillion expected by 2025, the global environmental burden of cigarette filters is also significant. Uh, it is estimated that 1.69 billion pounds of butts wind up as litter worldwide on the beaches. Volunteers collected 1,684,183 1, cigarette butts into the 2000 U.S. cleanup. It may be even possible to ban the sale of filtered cigarettes altogether on the basis of their adverse environmental impact. This may be attractive in coastal regions where beaches accumulate butt waste but, and where smoking indoors is increasingly prohibited. 
Um, young children playing in the sand at a beach or in playground sandbox, sandbox may be tempted to put cigarette butts, which contain concentrated amounts of carcinogens and other toxic chemicals, trapped from the tobacco smoke, into their mouths, and even older children may touch the cigarette butts and put their fingers in or near their mouth or eyes. Rhode Island Department of Health reported 146 cigarette cases ingested among Rhode Island Department of Health reported 146 cigarette cases ingested among children six years or, or younger on public beaches. Of these, approximately one third displayed transient nicotine toxicity, meaning they were poisoned by some sort of nicotine. Um, according to the National Health Survey Association, drifting tobacco smoke, even outdoors, can trigger asthmatic attacks, bronchial infections, and other serious health problems in non-smokers. This is especially true for almost 100 million Americans who have asthma, chronic bronchitis, chronic sinusitis, emphysema, and other breathing-related problems. Similarly, cigarettes could be sold with a butt deposit to be refunded when the pack is returned to the vendor with the butts. As with bottles and cans, this could spark both more care on the part of the smokers and provide income to others who retrieve any butts that smokers discard. It would also increase the opportunity of cost smoking, thus perhaps having a salutary effect. In conclusion, the World Health Organization estimates that by 2030, tobacco will account for almost 10 million deaths per year, making it the greatest cause of death worldwide. And whereas deaths from smoking around the world will soon outnumber those from AIDS, tuberculosis, traffic accidents, murder, and suicide combined. I am now open for cross-examination. The University of Georgia study was they tested the people and not the air, so um, I don't think the device. First thing I'd like to bring up is the workability of the affirmative side's plan. The affirmative side would have you believe that enforcement is going to work through media, through uh, programs that will put signs up, programs that will just inform the public that the beaches are not a good place to smoke at. The affirmative side also said that there is no place in the state of Florida that currently has these kind of restrictions. They're wrong. The city of Boca Raton is currently under a no smoking on their public beaches and parks restriction. The enforcement policy is much the same as what the affirmative team is planning on a statewide level. They have signs, they have uh, word of mouth, they have people saying smoking is not allowed here. What they do not have is citations, what they do not have is patrols, they do not have anybody patrolling these beaches. Um, I'm sorry, it's the wrong slide. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, yeah, I don't know. Next month. And if you can play the audio. 
audio for me, please? This is taken on uh, at Palmetto Park, I mean, right in front of the lifeguard stations, and it was taken about a week and a half ago. Sorry, but it's my fault. It's my fault. <laughs> um, while they're setting up, I interviewed one of the lifeguards there, uh, Mike Land Gunston. She's a lifeguard station 20. She's been with the city for several years, has never witnessed enforcement of litter or smoking ordinances. She said that the only time it's an issue is when someone complains, and even then, after local law enforcement is notified, response is generally 30%.